In today's video, we're taking a look at MSG and seeing if we can melt it down to a liquid. Monosodium glutamate. Yes. That is a fun thing to say. Most commonly referred to as MSG, its initials. That is a flavor enhancer that gives a strong savory or umami, umami flavor to umami food. Umami seasoning. Um, yeah. I thought umami was a food for a second. It's a flavor. Yeah, it's like sweet, sour. Sweet, sour, sweet, savory. Sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and savory. Umami is a fifth one. It's pretty common in some types of cooking. Stereotypically, it's often used in Chinese food all the time. Soup, fried noodles, fried rice, meat, fish, vegetables. Those are just a few of the options it has on the back. Here's the basic idea. We've got several pounds of pure monosodium glutamate, also known as MSG. We're gonna see how well it melts down and what we can do with it if it does. I actually love this stuff. Mm -hmm. There are some people who believe that they have a sensitivity to it, that it gives them headaches or makes headaches worse or makes them sick. I'm not saying that that doesn't ever happen, but in all double blind trials where they've tried to reproduce the effect, it's failed to be reproduced in even the people who said they had a high sensitivity to it. So it's very possible that there's something that just wasn't well accounted for in some of those trials. There haven't been tons of them. And for the most part, I think people who feel that they're sensitive to it just avoid it, okay. and that's okay. Uh, I have never felt that I have any sensitivity to it, and like I said, I enjoy it quite a bit. I think this it's is, a great flavor. This is a different version of it. This is just like something that's sold in the spice aisle. This is more like what pepper. you're going to find in the store. It's not very likely that you're going to find this in your local grocery store. Depending on your store. So the reason we have three pounds of it is I wanted to do an experiment. I wanted to see if we could melt MSG, and it turns out that the melting point of MSG is 450 degrees Fahrenheit which is way lower than salt. So we have melted salt in the past. We've melted rock salt. I melted a few- a uh, lamp? Yeah, <laughs> rock lamps for fun, like salt rock lamps. Poured it onto ice probably. Yeah, we did that a few a times. It takes so much heat that we've had to use the foundry. Yeah, so table salt, sodium chloride melts at approximately 1,474 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is far. more than a thousand degrees more yeah. than to melt this stuff. This we should be able to melt on a stove or even in the oven. And yeah. I think that's what we're going to try. And then after it's melted, I kind of want to play with it because I think, I mean, carefully, because 450 degrees is easily enough to burn you. That's hotter than pretty much any frying oil you're going to use, unless you're frying like a whole duck, I'm pretty sure it gets cooked about that temperature. But I want to dip a stick into it and see like what the cooling liquid, like what mm -hmm. crystallize as it cools down, um, maybe try dripping little bits of it into a small container of I water in the sink. I want to try to cook something in it. And I also want to try to cook something in it, so I grabbed a couple of things. We'll see if we can cook in liquid MSG. So MSG is pretty common. For example, these are some barbecue Pringles. It has written on here, you can see monosodium glutamate. So I think we're going to start melting this down. We've got our, our pot that we cooked a whole bunch of too much popcorn on the stove. And while the bottom of it is a little bit stained, we're gonna try putting in here so that way we'll be able to see everything happening if we get it to liquefy nicely. So I'm going to set the oven for about 460. That's about 10 degrees above the melting temperature. And I want it to just barely get there because I do think if it's above that, it's gonna just burn. So we're gonna put it at just a little over its melting point and then we're just gonna leave it for at least half an hour, come back, see where it is. As the MSG has been melting every once in a while, I open the oven up and just stir it so it's a more even consistency. At this point, the melted and the non-melted have stirred together to be sort of this almost a bread dough consistency right here. So we're just gonna keep letting it melt and I think we're gonna get to a liquid because it does just, parts of it start bubbling and boiling on the sides a little bit, so. Getting close, I think. And of course, this is bag one. We do have two more bags to try and add into it once we have a good liquid. Our first batch of MSG has actually melted down quite nicely. It caramelized. It did turn brown, and I was worried. I didn't think it was going to, but we now have like a thin syrup consistency, and it's all melted quite nice. Oh, it's getting a lot of bubbles as I'm stirring, but you know, that's good and liquidy. That's what I was hoping for. It's actually not as runny as I thought it might be, like table salt turns to just like a liquid liquid. Mm -hmm. um, but this melted great, so now I think we're gonna start by at least one bag and maybe two. We're just gonna add that in and try and get that melted along with it now that we know for sure this method does work. This took hours to properly melt down, but we do now have a pretty runny, thin liquid here. I wasn't expecting the color change. Just as a 
first quick test. I actually just want to see what happens if it drips into water. So I'm just going to take a little bit on the spatula and drip it into this cup. And it's on the stove and the stove is on to help keep it stay liquid. It's like hard crack stage. Something like that. Try and pour some of these formations out. Oh yeah, it's, it's dissolving quickly. very quickly, which shouldn't be surprising, I suppose. I'm gonna try some. I bet it tastes like MSG. Sure does. Oh, that's <laughs> a lot. I like it, but that much of it, that's, that's more than is necessary, definitely. I like that much. It's oh, just boy. fine. So let's see, I've got a piece of asparagus here and asparagus is something that is often cooked at a pretty high heat around 400 to 450 degrees. So I'm thinking this might be a good test. I am going to be using these tongs well out of the way. Just gonna do a quick dip and if nothing crazy happens, then I'll stick it in and hold it in longer. Oh, it started to fizz. I hear it bubbling, but it's yep. not as violent as we were expecting. Now this is nowhere near as runny as a hot oil would be. And it may not transmit heat. It may not conduct heat as nice and easily as oil either. <laughs> like oh we have boy. a hard shell. We may have to let that cool and crack it out. An entire french fry dipped in MSG. Oh, I'm just gonna drop it down in there apparently. Oh boy. There we go. Just let that sit there and cook maybe? While that fry is doing its thing, I'm just gonna just a stick, just to see what happens if it cools down and then I like, can I build up layers of this? Oh, hang on. Oh, there you go. That's an odd thing we've done there. Molding and casting with asparagus. Fair enough. So now you can eat the asparagus tip and tell me if it has any nice MSG flavor or a ton of it. Like so, so, so much of it? Like so much of it, it's delicious. Let's do that again. You may see there's a lot of fibers here, and this has occurred to us that it might be possible to make MSG candy, or cotton MSG, I guess. It wouldn't be candy. Tell us to make it. Here's the thing. Sugar melts at a way lower temperature than MSG. Our cotton candy machine can't get hot enough to melt this, or at least not consistently. So we may want to try and find a way to do it, but it wouldn't work in our machine. but did it cook it? It did. That cool. french fry is soft and warm all the way. These are pre-cooked fries, so yep. it goes quickly, but. Oh, wow. That is a savory french mean? fry. Yep. Well, and I still had like plenty of like shell still on it. It did not come off nice and easily. We <laughs> dripped some MSG into water. Yes. But now I want to try the opposite. I'm going to drip some water, just like a couple drops. Okay. Off of a fork into the MSG to see all what right. it does. Ooh, okay, it reacts like a lot of molten stuff does. Oils and sizzles. Yep. Water is more dense than oil, and especially more dense than hot oil. So if water drips into oil, it sinks and then turns to steam. So you get crazy splattering. This is sitting on this, top of it. Yeah, the water sits on top of it. I wonder if it's different if I put the fork in the... Ooh, sure enough. A bit more energetic if the fork goes down into the molten MSG. Just adding a little more flavor and heat our lunch cooled down a little bit. Is this for you, internet? You're allowed to not swallow that. I ain't a quitter. Gosh. That was the worst thing I've ever done. We've just created an <laughs> MSG sensitivity where there was none previously. Okay, we might have finally hit a saturation point. This took a ton, like, I poured more than half of this into the cup of water. I'm never gonna be able to taste again, Nate. Everything else, everything will just taste bland compared to what you've eaten today. You've overloaded your taste buds. Gonna try this again, gonna pour some liquid MSG into this cup of very MSG saturated, well, maybe not saturated yet, because We're I'm not sure out. there's a limit. I think you can just keep adding it forever. No, it's still collapsing down the bottom a little. It could just be weight, but it's still dissolving. There's like no limit. You can just keep dissolving MSG in water for a long time. Cool. All right. That's gonna be cool. I just dipped this stick in the MSG in the pot several times. Yep. And as it's cooled down, it's fractured a little bit. So I'll be very interested to see if our heart does the same thing. <laughs> 
So this side's not sticky, just the side exposed to the air. Yeah, interesting, okay. That's the largest piece of MSG I've ever seen right there. This is the sharpest piece I've ever seen. Oh, good. That's like a little dagger happening here. So you can mold and cast with melted MSG. Uh -huh. No idea why you would ever want to. What is the point I of this? I can't come up with a good reason to cast something in MSG. It's like a salt lake, except it's not salt. Very cool stuff. If there's anything particular you'd like to see us do with this, mm -hmm. you can let us know and maybe we'll give it a try. Uh, this was mostly proof of concept to see if you could, and you can. Can you cook stuff in it? Yes, you can. It doesn't really soak in. It forms a shell, which is odd and strange. And then you have way too much of it. You mm -hmm. can't get it all off. And even when you like, with the asparagus, you pull a shell yeah. off and it's still like had a really strong flavor. Guys, that's it for today, but we've always got cool stuff coming out. Hit that button right there to subscribe to the channel so you never miss a great video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.